let me introduce the um, uh, some classical image theorem. So the first one is called weak law of large numbers. Now we have x1 through x2 and here xn and, and etc. And then they are iid random variables. They are not the sequences, but the iid random variables. The expectation of xi is equal to mu, and the variance of xi is sigma square, and the variance of xi is finite. Define the sample mean of the uh, xi. Then here I use the notation n on here uh, because uh, to indicate the dependence on the sample size, the n. Then this uh, x bar n, the sample mean converges in probability to mu. That's the uh, weak law of large numbers. Proof is that so we want to show that this probability uh, of absolute distance between x n, x bar n, and, and mu. Uh, that uh, is going to zero, is that probability is uh, approaching to zero as n goes to infinity. That's the definition of convergence in probability. And this is, if you, you can Square the both sides of the uh, and the absolute distance square. I mean that is absolute distance square and epsilon square. The um, here the inequality in probability does not change. Then that is. And then this is u2. You to cherish the inequality. So you may have learned the several inequalities in chapter three. Um, and one of the inequality that you have learned is the Chebyshev's inequality. And by Chebyshev's inequality, this uh, probability that the, the uh, absolute distance square greater or equal to epsilon squared is less than or equal to variance of x bar n divided by epsilon square. This is.
sigma multiplied by n times epsilon goes to, it goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, this, the denominator gets uh, is larger and the numerator is a fixed sigma square. So that quantity is approaching, approaching to zero when n goes to infinity. So that implies that the probab probability of uh, absolute dif uh, distance between xn and, and x bar and mu uh, greater or equal to epsilon is, up, is uh, going to zero as n goes to infinity, which means that uh, uh, x bar n converges in probability to mu. The next theorem is called strong law of large numbers, which, called, which is called S L N N. Then I I C. So we have uh, still random variables. I I D random variables with expectation of X I to mu and variance of X I sigma square which is finite and define sample mean as again and x bar n then is convergence almost surely to mu. So we have a, a, a stronger convergence result in here. So we have IID random variables with the, uh, uh, I mean, which has the same mean and same variance for across all the uh, random variables. And then the sample mean converges almost surely to the mu. Okay. So remark for Over n, l, l, n is first psi muscular less than the variance of x psi equal to sigma square is finite. It's not necessary. So it is okay to be variance is going to be infinite um, for double l, l, n, n. The sample mean approaches the population mean as n goes to infinity. So when we have sequence of, of uh, random uh, variables um, uh, uh, with, I, uh, with uh, IID, um, when we have IID random samples, and if that approaches this, the uh, uh, based on the based on the uh, uh, 
random samples, the statistic, uh, if the statistic approach to constant n goes to infinity, is called uh, constant in um, probability. I mean, if the um, sample quantity uh, based on the IID random samples uh, converges in, prob in probability uh, to the constant, is called consistency. So we are gonna talk about more more about uh, more about this consistency in the chapter ten. Then let me introduce the famous theorem, the central limit theorem. So we have uh, IID random samples, and uh, and then their moment generated function ex uh, exists in the neighborhood of zero, uh, which means that Uh, for some constant h uh, greater than zero, this moment gener generating functions, MGF, uh, exists uh, for the uh, absolute value of t is less than h. And let's say uh, common mean is, is mu and common variance is sigma square, uh, uh, which is finite. And then these two, uh, uh, this fact that mu and sigma are finite is guaranteed by the fact that the MGF uh, exists. So because MGF exists, so uh, mu and sigma square are finite. Then we have With the square root n rate, um, uh, x bar n minus mu times square root n converges in, in distribution to the y, with, where y follows the normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma square. Or we can say that. Uh, uh, x bar n minus mu divided by sigma divided by square root n it converges in 
uh, distribution to normal distribution with mean zero and variance one, which is a standard normal uh, distribution. Um, I think that the, the second expression is uh, more uh, familiar than the first expression um, to you. So when we have the uh, when we, when we uh, have the fact that the moment generated functions exist in the neighborhood of zero, and when we have a random sample, and then the sample mean um, with the square root n rate uh, converges in, in distribution to the normal distribution. That's the uh, center limit theorem. Remark for CRT. So the, there is a strong assumption um, that MGF uh, exists um, in this theorem, uh, but this existence of MGF is not necessary to prove the, um, the center limit theorem. So uh, there is another concept called the characteristic function. Um, um, you can use that concept uh, to prove the center limit theorem, but that's beyond of the scope of this course, so I will omit. Uh, omit the explaining about the uh, characteristic function, but the uh, now what I want to say is that the existence of MGF is very strong assumption uh, for CRT. So, uh, so to prove CRT, that that, that assumption does not need it. Is not needed. So stronger version, the theorem 5.5.15 5 is very general, only needs finite variance assumption uh, uh, to prove this uh, the CAT. So we have, when you have the random uh, sample and the finite variance, and then the, uh, the you can prove the CAT. Let's look at an example for the CAT. So suppose, X one, two, I ID negative So we have an IID random sample um, of negative binomial. Uh, when X follows negative binomial, I would say N B. The expectation x is r times r minus p divided by p. Variance of x is r times 1 minus p divided by p squared. So you can see that. By CRT, so 
So x bar are minus r times 1 minus p divided by p divided by square root of the uh, variance of x, this, which is the square root of the r times 1 minus p divided by p square, with square root n rate is converges in distribution to the normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. So let's say r equal to 10, p equal to 1 half, n is equal to 30. And let's say we want to calculate probability less than um, 11. So then this is probability that sum of i equal to 1 to 30, xi, let's say less than equal to 11. So less than equal to 11 is less than or equal to 330. Here, this sum of i equal to 30 xi follows the negative binomial with m times i times p, which is the, um, in this case, 300 uh, with the probability one half. So this is prob probability that sum of x equals 0 to 330 and use the binomial, uh, negative binomial uh, PDF, uh, PMF, it's got x, 1 half 300 times 1 half x. And then you can calculate that this uh, probability by using computer, then that probability is 0 0.8. 916. And now we can use the central limit theorem approximation to calculate a probability. So, x bar minus 10 divided by square root of 20 by the square root of 30 is less than or equal to um, 11 minus 10 divided by square root of 20 by the square root of 30. So this is the um, you just had just had just uh, so we just we need to standardize this x bar by the using the CRT form. So um, you can standardize this. Um, I mean this uh, when we approximate to the square root of n x minus mu divided by sigma greater zero point normal zero one, which means that your x bar is approximated by normal distribution with mean mu and sigma squared divided by n. Uh, you can see that so we just subtract the, the mean and divide by uh, sigma square uh, uh, divide by uh, square root and this uh, divide by the ratio the sigma divided by square root of n, which is the sigma is the square root of 20 on here, uh, and um, divide by square root of n is the square root of 30, and then we have a, a 11 on here, uh, and the right hand side just do the same thing. The subtract the 10 and divide by the ratio. The ratio is the square root of 20 divided by the square root of 30 to calculate this probability. Then this is approximate by, since this part is standard normal, this is by calculation of this number, then you can get You can get the uh, 0 0.8897 for that uh, this case. So you can see that the CLT approximation is in this case uh, quite good um, to, uh, uh, compared to the original calculation, original calcul uh, probability calculation. 
but this is not always the best. So if your sample size is small and you if you want to use the CIT approximation, the result may not be the, the best one. So your result uh, may be far, far from the, the original uh, probability uh, calculation. So keep in mind that CRT approximation in the large sample size is good, but the, um, in, um, in the small sample size, they, they uh, may not be the good one. 